assalamu alaikum in this lecture we are going to talk about the insulators that are used in the transmission lines now insulators they are present between the line conductors that are placed over the insulator and the supports so these are the cross arms which are support for the insulators and then we have these supports which are the supports for the conductors and supports for the conductors are actually towers and why do we have insulators placed because we want to prevent the leakage current that passes through conductor to the earth and this tower is actually grounded so the conductor is placed over the insulator that provides a high resistance path for the leakage current so this insulators provide clearance between the grounded tower and the conductor now for the properties of the insulator we have the first one which is high mechanical strength the mechanical strength of the insulator should be high because it has to withstand the conductor weight as well as the tension that is produced by the uh, the wind load as well so whenever there is wind blowing the stress on the insulator increases in addition to the conductor weight then it should have a high electrical resistance to avoid the leakage current or to reduce the leakage currents it also should have high relative permittivity it is a high dielectric strength and by dielectric strength it is actually the measure of the maximum electric field that a material can withstand so if I have to define the dielectric strength, so it is actually the maximum electrical field that a material can withstand. So for the good insulator, it should have high relative permittivity means it should have high dielectric strength and dielectric strength is actually the measure of uh, the insulator capability to withstand electric field before a failure is occurred in the insulating properties of the insulator. And usually we measure this dielectric strength in megavolt per meter. Then this dielectric strength it is actually dependent on the characteristic of the insulating material and if we have pores or some sort of impurities or there are some cracks due to stress in the insulator that will reduce the permittivity of the insulator means the dielectric strength of the insulator will reduce and the last thing is that it should have high ratio of puncture strength to flashover now puncture strength is actually the measure of insulator capability to withstand puncture voltage or the high voltage value that it can easily withstand without being punctured so this is known as puncture strength if the puncture strength to flashover ratio is higher there is less probability of insulator being permanently damaged because before the puncture in the insulator occurs there is a flashover between the conductor and the grounded tower and that flashover will be detected but if we have a smaller puncture strength or smaller puncture voltage then the insulator will be permanently damaged before there is a flashover which can be detected so these are the few properties of the insulator normally these uh, insulators these insulators are actually the pin type insulator i will be explaining that in the later part of the lecture pin insulators so they all the insulators normally they are made up of porcelain but some of them are also made up of glass nowadays and there are four different type of uh, insulators pin insulators so these are the pin insulators in which the conductor is placed over the insulator then we have suspension type of insulators in which we have discs that are attached with each other through a metal link and uh, then we have strain insulators which are placed at the points where we have high tension in the conductor wires and lastly we have shackle insulators that we usually don't use but this is one type of insulators that were also present 
now before going into types of the insulators we have to discuss about the insulation failure so usually we have two different type of stresses one is uh, due to the weight of the conductor as well as the wind load that is uh, applied over the insulator that is the mechanical stress then we have electrical stress because of the electrical field that is between the conductor and the ground so whenever there is uh, the breakdown of insulation we have two different type of phenomena that might be occurring the first one is the flashover and the second one is the puncture in flashover there is a arc between the conductor and the ground through the air so it is not actually passing through the insulator so it is just passing through air and along the body of the insulator but in puncture breakdown we actually have current that is passing through the insulator and it is permanently damaging the insulator now in flashover that is actually caused by the wet conducting layer that is formed over the surface of the insulator and in this case once the flashover start occurring it actually does not permanently damaged damage the insulator in the start but once it is prolonged then the heat is produced and that heat will permanently damage the whole insulator so this is known as flashover in the puncture the discharge or the current that will be passing through the body of the insulator and it actually permanently damages the insulator and the dielectric strength of the insulator reduces to zero so what we have to do we have to increase the thickness between the conductor and the grounded part of the tower and also we should have high safety factor and the safety factor is actually the ratio of puncture strength and flashover voltage and so the puncture voltage should be higher than the flashover voltage and if the ratio of puncture strength and flashover voltage is high then we have a high safety factor so what we need we have we need a high safety factor for the insulator in order to reduce the permanent damage to the insulator so these are the two different type of uh, insulation failures the first one is due to the flashover and the second one is due to the puncture this one due to the puncture in the insulator so now for different type of uh, insulators the first one is the pin insulator in pin insulator we have a groove on the top of the insulator in which the conductor is placed so this is a pin insulator and we have a conductor placed over the insulator in a groove then we have a lead thimble inside the insulator and uh, the pin is attached here in this uh, thimble and attach it to the cross arm so this insulator is attached with the cross arm through a pin and uh, it is usually used up to the voltage level of uh, 33 kilovolt and after that after above the 33 kilovolt uh, value the insulator becomes too bulky and uneconomical because if it becomes bulky we have to make the sports stronger as well so rather than using the bulkier pin insulators we have the second type of uh, insulators that is known as suspension type insulators in suspension type insulators we have uh, porcelain discs we have three discs in this figure and for the connection of these porcelain discs we have uh, metal fitting so in this particular type of insulator the conductor is at the bottom of the insulator string and uh, it this string is actually attached with the cross arm so this is your suspension type insulator and that is attached to the cross arm now for the advantages of this uh, suspension type insulator is that uh, actually we don't have to make a suspension type insulator for uh, each of the voltage level separately what we have we have a uh, specifically designed disc that can uh, provide insulation up to 11 kilovolt value of the voltage if we have to increase the 
voltage level what we have to do we have to just put the disk in series with each other and if one of the disk is damaged we don't have to replace the whole suspension insulator we just have to remove that particular disk and replace it with a new one and in this particular type of uh, insulation the conductor is actually at the bottom of the the insulation so the conductor is actually protected from the lightning as well so this is an added advantage for the suspension type insulators then we have uh, strain insulators so the strain insulators are present uh, at the high tension points and these are usually dead ends where the transmission line is being ended or there is a turn in the transmission line or the conductor span is quite long so these strain insulators are present there so they are just there to reduce the tension and for the strain insulator they are actually the suspension insulators but the orientation of uh, the insulator is just changed in the previous case the suspension type insulators we actually have disc that are horizontal to ground they are oriented in horizontal plane but in the strain insulators they are in vertical plane then we have shackle insulators they are usually used for the low voltage distribution lines and they can be used both in vertical and horizontal plane but they are now obsolete they we are not using the shackle insulators nowadays so now we will be moving on towards the analysis of the string insulator and string efficiency in suspension insulator or string insulator we usually have uh, discs that are attached in series with each other and uh, we have a metal fitting or metal links that are above and below the insulators like this is one disc and this is your second disc and we have a metal fitting in between that so these discs actually form a capacitor there is a current the leakage current that is flowing between the conductor that is at the lowest point of the insulator and then between the tower which is grounded so there is a potential difference between these two points point a and point b so there is a leakage current or the current i that is flowing from the conductor towards the grounded tower and due to the presence of insulation between the two metal fittings we have a capacitance present in between the conductor and ground path so we have three insulator in the insulator strings so we have three capacitances in the path of the current so now what we have we have a voltage value v between the conductor and the tower so if the capacitance value is same that then the capacitive reactance will be same and the voltage that is across the capacitance value each of the individual capacitance will be equally divided so if the total voltage is v then the voltage across each of the capacitance that will be divided into three parts because we have three capacitances three insulating disks so if i have to find v disk it is actually v by 3 so this is the voltage that is across the individual disk and this particular capacitance this is known as self or mutual capacitance so it is self or mutual capacitance now this is the one type of capacitance then we also have shunt capacitance now this shunt capacitance it is actually the capacitance that exists between the metal fitting so we have a metal fitting here and the tower so this is the tower that is grounded right so the capacitance that exists between the metal fitting and the tower that is known as shunt capacitance and due to this shunt capacitance the charging current that was passing through the self capacitance is no more same because one part of the current is going to the shunt capacitance c1 then there is another one that is going to another capacitance c1 and then there is another current that is flowing through the capacitance that is a shunt one so the charging current changes and is not same in all the disks charges
current in all the disks is not same right because a part of the current is flowing through the shunt capacitance so the largest current is at this point right so a portion of the current is passing through c1 which is i3 so i3 is actually greater than i2 is greater than i1 so the largest current is flowing through the the disk that is closest to the conductor and it gradually decreases as we move towards the grounded tower so the i3 value is greater than i2 and it is greater than i1 the largest current is flowing through the capacitance or through the disk that is closest to the conductor and the smallest one is passing through the capacitance that is closest to the grounded tower so if the current through all the capacitance is different so v disk that was in previous case v by 3 is in this case it is actually different so we have three different voltages v1 v2 and v3 in this case because the current is not same across all the insulator disks so that was just a brief explanation of uh, potential distribution over the suspension insulator string so we have uh, two different type of uh, capacitances one is the self or mutual capacitance that, uh, we have a porcelain portion of each disc in between two metal links so each disc makes a capacitor that is uh, known as uh, mutual or special uh, cell capacitance then we have uh, shunt capacitance that is actually between the metal fitting and the tower and because of the shunt capacitance the leakage current that is passing through the uh, the capacitance or through the disk is actually not same so the voltage distribution over the insulators over three different insulators is also not same so the voltage closer to the conductor has uh, the largest value and the voltage across the disk that is closest to the ground tower has the minimum value so now if i just have to summarize the important points of the potential distribution over the suspension insulator string we have a voltage that is not actually equal in all the disks the maximum voltage is closest to the conductor so the v3 value is the largest one and if the voltage is higher so it means that the maximum stress is present at the last disk and the probability of uh, this disk to get puncture is higher than the two remaining disks and if this particular disc get punctured then the stress on these two discs also increases so if one of the discs that is closest to the conductor get punctured then in a long run all the insulators that are attached in the string or all the insulating discs that are attached in the string will get punctured thank you